Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, they got a little quick video for you on calibrating uh, micrometers. I'm gonna do uh, outside micrometer, and we're also gonna talk about a depth micrometer. This video comes as a request uh, from uh, some of my viewers out there. Uh, recently just sold a bunch of metrology tooling. Uh, that came out of Lockheed Martin. I acquired a large sum of stuff and kind of sp split it up and spread it around a lot of people and people were wanting to know, how can I check the calibration on these measuring tools and make adjustments if necessary? So we're gonna be covering that. First off, I will say guys that I checked a lot of these tools before I sent them out. In fact, I checked most of them before I sent them out just to make sure everything was good with them. And uh, what I found in that lot of tools was everything pretty much was in very good calibration. I only found just a couple of tools uh, that were out of calibration. And uh, when I did stumble across those, I usually went ahead and just quickly calibrated them before I sent them out. I'm not gonna promise that I checked every single one of them, uh, but I did check most of them. Uh, so most of that tooling should be in good shape, but for peace of mind, it's always a good idea to periodically check your stuff. Uh, you can uh, send stuff off to a calibration service. Uh, if you're doing uh, manufacturing for uh, certain industries like aerospace and so forth, you're actually required to have your tools uh, calibrated and there's usually gonna be a calibration sticker on there that it was checked on a certain date and everything was in specification. That's usually done, has to be done by a third party uh, that comes in and does that. So um, it's just, uh, which is common in a lot of things where you need to have something certified it's uh, done externally. With the Lockheed Martin tools that I sold, uh, there really were not any standards, there were not any adjustment tools in those boxes. And I think that that was by design, uh, that the guys in the tool crib really didn't want the people out on the floor adjusting those tools because they had everything certified. So I did get a lot of questions, hey, is there you know calibration standards and stuff like that that come with these tools? And the answer was no. They were probably all, either uh, probably in a box somewhere and they didn't end up with uh, the stuff that I got. But anyway, it is what it is. Very common not to have those. Uh, if you do want to do calibration or check your calibration, you are going to need some standards. Uh, we're going to talk about some things you can use for those. And uh, anyway, let's get in here and let's start with the uh, outside micrometer on how to check it and how to adjust it if necessary. So let's start with the easiest one that we're going to do here. And this is going to be the zero to one inch micrometer. This is a example. This is a stare at very common uh, micrometer. Anybody that's a machinist is going to probably have one of these in their toolbox. Uh, it's the most common one out there uh, because that's probably the most common range that people are machining in, to be honest with you. So on this one, you don't really need a standard because it's gonna go all the way down to zero. And that's what we're gonna actually calibrate off of is we're just gonna run this down and see where it reads uh, on the anvil. Now, one thing I will recommend you do uh, is you wanna clean, make sure that these uh, um, faces on, your, on the, the anvils here are clean. One way you can do that, particularly on a small micrometer like this one is just put a piece of paper in between them and uh, kind of run them down together and and you can kind of pull that paper out. I got a little bit too tight there. And that'll, if there's any kind of trash or just anything on those, those anvils, it'll usually clean it up pretty good. And now what you want to do is just run it down and see where it reads. And you can see this one here is reading right on zero. So this micrometer is in calibration. Now, if you really want to check it at the other end, uh, you can pull it all the way out to the one inch mark and use a calibration standard and uh, check it at both ends. But honestly, uh, usually we just check it at the bottom end and that's all. So let me grab a standard here. This is a uh, typical one inch standard that comes, if you buy a micrometer new, it's gonna come with a standard usually. You can order these separately. You can find them used on eBay and stuff like that. This uh, is exactly one inch around and you put it on there and yeah, it's reading right on zero there at one inch. So this micrometer is in calibration. We have checked it on both ends. Again, usually we only check it on the bottom end. So there we go. Let's do uh, the next size up. So next I've got a zero to one inch micrometer. Again, first thing I always do, even when I'm using these is I just 
check the anvils and make sure they're clean. And on a larger one, you know, I can get my finger in there and I'll just usually just wipe them. Uh, but again, we're going to use this. The bottom end of this one, remember, is one inch. It's a one to two inch micrometer. So let's run it down here. We use our one inch standard and reading right on zero. Now, if I wanted to, again, I could check the other end. Again, normally that's not done. On micrometer standards, when you get to the larger ones, they typically go to something like this. And that's, that standard is exactly two inches long. Now, if you don't have micrometer standards, uh, you can use gauge blocks for this. Uh, a lot of people may have gauge blocks. Let me show you that. So if you don't have uh, the standards for micrometers, you can use these gauge blocks. These gauge blocks are fairly standard in machine shops and whatever as uh, standards for checking all kinds of things. And you can see, see there, my one inch gauge block measures one inch. And I got a two inch here as well that we can use if needed. It's the exact same length as this. This is just a known standard. Uh, so as long as your gauge blocks are in good shape and uh, measuring accurately, uh, you can use these as well. So what do you do if you run this thing down here and it's off a little bit? And usually when a micrometer's off, it's gonna be where it just doesn't line perfectly up on that line. Or, you know, maybe, you, I've very seldom seen one that's off more than a thou. Uh, it's usually less than that. But sometimes uh, either wear on the ends here or just using it over a long period of time, it can get out of adjustment. How do you make that change? Well, the way that you do that is you run it down just like that, and you want this line to match that line. And you can just make an adjustment to the micrometer. If you look on the back of this, there's a little hole right here. And back here, I have some micrometer wrenches. These are some various ones that I've just got over in my toolbox. And I'm just gonna use this one right here. But if you look, this little wrench, there's a little pin that fits into that hole. And you can then, Come over here and use that to turn this barrel. This barrel up underneath here, the one that has all the lines on it, it will turn. It's a tight fit, but it will turn. Uh, it's just kind of pressed on there and you can make little changes in there. So you just basically come in here, put that on there and you just spin this where it lines up where it should on zero at a particular calibrated uh, interval. So that's how you make your adjustments, is just by twisting that barrel. And I do occasionally have to make some adjustments depending on um, what kind of tolerances I'm looking at. I've got micrometers that measure in 10 thousandths of an inch, and if I'm needing to accurately measure something at that level, um, you know, I might have to make a fine adjustment. Uh, keep in mind too that uh, these measurements, temperature can affect these measurements. You know, normally uh, in a calibration room, you're gonna be, everything's gonna be at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I don't know what that translates to in Celsius, but that is a standard temperature that uh, calibrations are made at. You know, if you're out in a garage shop uh, or, you know, someplace that's not air conditioned in the summertime, particularly like me down here in South Georgia, where it gets really hot, uh, my work that I'm working on, if it's not 68 degrees, it's gonna grow a little bit. It's gonna be a little bit oversized and I might need to adjust my micrometer for the temperature that I'm working in. Uh, again, this is usually 10 thousandths of an inch differences, but if you're doing really fine work, you know, that might be necessary out on the shop floor. You may have to adjust your micrometer for the environment that you're working in. Same thing if you're working in a, a much colder shop, it will often measure below size. And, and that's perfectly fine. If, if that's the environment you're working in, you need to make adjustments if you're working on high precision parts. You know, if you got a tolerance of plus or minus five thousandths, you may not worry about it as much. If you've got a tolerance of plus or minus ten thousandths of an inch or a ten thousandth or two, uh, you know, that might be something to consider. All right. So talked about outside micrometers. Let's talk about the depth of micrometer next. So this is a typical depth micrometer. It's gonna be used to measure the depth from this reference area up here, which uh, 
is this flat ground surface here, measuring down in a hole or measuring a slot or something like that. Uh, typically, a depth micrometer set is going to come with multiple rods. Uh, this will go from zero to one inch, the way this one is set up right now. Uh, but I have different rods that I can put in here to measure different depths. So this rod measures one to two inches, and this rod measures two to three inches. Uh, different micrometer sets are going to have different set numbers of rods in them, depending on them. Most, I probably, this zero to three inch set is probably the most common size because, again, that's going to cover the range that's probably used 90% of the time. Uh, sometimes you'll find a zero to six inch set. I've seen zero to nine inch sets. I've actually got a zero to 12 inch set. I don't think I've ever needed to use uh, those higher, longer rods, but I got a set. I got, in case I ever needed, I came across a set somewhere along the line and I've just always kept it. That's kind of become my standard one. But the nice thing about these is, is these rods are interchangeable and you can take them out and use them as needed. And let's talk about first, how do you do that? So there's a little thimble up on the top of this that unscrews. And when you do, uh, your rods just come out of there. So there are my three rods that come with this. If I was gonna measure something between one and two inches, I would then take this rod, put in there, and then I would screw my top on. And now I've got a range. Uh, when I'm reading this number, from zero to one, this is gonna be between one inches and two inches. With this rod, it'd be between two and three. So, all right, let's start with the easy. Let's go back to our zero to one inch set here. And just like with the, um, uh, the outside micrometer, with this one, you, to measure zero, you just go to zero. Now, on a depth micrometer, notice that the barrel reads backwards. You know, we read from zero to one in this direction on outside micrometer. On this one, we're measuring from zero to one going in this direction. So what you'll do is you need to come over to a flat surface. I'm on a surface plate. Uh, if you don't have a surface plate, you know, find something like a ground rod. You could do it on something like this. You know, worst case scenario, you could even do something like your mill table. Uh, but you really want to get something super flat. That's, that's the idea deal here. So the way we're going to measure this is we're going to just put it onto the surface plate. I'm going to kind of hold it down where it's nice and flat. And we'll just go to where it starts clicking. And then we'll look over here and see where it reads. And this one is dead nuts zero. I mean, it's perfect. So no need to calibrate. Now on the longer rods, uh, let's go ahead and we'll uh, see, take this one out. I'm gonna put in a uh, one to two inch rod. And uh, on this, we need to use, some, again, some type of standard. So I'm gonna use my uh, gauge block that I had a while ago. And we'll just come in here. I'm going to, again, hold it down nice and tight on this gauge block. We'll come in and make a measurement. And again, come over here and my rod eh, is off maybe a couple of tenths, but um, you know, you might want to repeat this one because you're only supporting it on one side. You know, it might make a difference. Getting pretty much the same measurement. If I wanted to, I could make a slight adjustment on that. Uh, to get it calibrated where it reads perfectly if it's uh, necessary. With this particular one, it's only going to read in thousandths inch of an inch increment, so I'm probably just going to leave it alone. That's going to be close enough. That's within the range of what this micrometer reads. Again, if it was a ten thousandths reading micrometer, I might consider fooling with the calibration. How do you change the calibration? So if you look up at the top of these uh, rods, there's uh, the cap, and that's a screw. And it's a little, uh, it's a very tight screw. It's, it's actually been split on one side. It's, it's on there very tight, but you can make adjustments in that. And when you do, that's gonna adjust how far up and down that goes. And we'll just look at one of our calibration wrenches that I had a while ago. These are kind of standard wrenches that do multiple things, but look at there, fits that slot just fine. And typically what you want to do is go over to probably put this in a vise uh, using soft jaws so that we don't damage this. We don't want to use hardened jaws and clamp down on that and guard it up. So you'd want to use uh, some brass or 
lid liners on your vise and you would make a very fine adjustment. And I will tell you right now that this, this can be extremely frustrating because uh, this is a fairly, just a tiny movement of that can make a big difference in the length of it. It's a, it's a process of trial and error. You just have to go in there and piddle, fiddle around with it, make an adjustment, put it back in your depth mic, check your calibration, make, make an adjustment, go back and forth until you just get it where it needs to be. Um, it's, it's not, I've done it before. It's, it's not a lot of fun, but it can be done. It's just, again, just some trial and error. You just have to get it just right. And for your two inch standard, you know, I would go to a two inch, um, um, gauge block. If you had a three inch standard, you know, go to a three inch gauge block. So you can use these gauge blocks here to make those differences. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, some back to basics here, calibrating um, uh, metrology tooling. Uh, this is just kind of your basics, and but something that's fairly easy to do, something you can check and shop yourself in most cases. If you have uh, some standards to use, uh, you can again use the gauge blocks, you can use uh, standards designed for micrometers, any of that can be used, whatever, as long as you have a known reference uh, that has been calibrated and you, you know that it's correct, you can use that to calibrate your tools with and uh, keep everything just like it needs to be and making accurate measurements. So uh, with that, guys, that's going to be a wrap. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. The thumbs up and comments are greatly appreciated. Uh, big thank you to all my Patreon supporters out there and other supporters of the site. Uh, really, really help things out. Hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when new uh, videos are posted. And uh, guys, with that, uh, this is going to be a wrap. As always, thank you for watching.